two, one, go, wiggle. Nice, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, now stop. Right? <laughs> Hold these, remember, and you might have run out of space, but that's okay. Wiggle this last one. And cut through. So yeah, so you kind of saved that last heart though. Yeah, I got you. I think it's good. It's good thank job. Much. And thank you for helping me improve that. Because it looks a lot better. No, I want to see that. It looks a little fat like an host. Let's check it out. That was me last week getting some training from Emily Bryant, a World Latte Art Competition winner. If you're at the same stage with your Latte Art as I'm at, where you can pour some intermediate patterns, but you sometimes have odd mistakes that you can't quite figure out, then this video is going to help. Oh, interesting choice. So interesting this, choice. This is just from watching people doing it, not from actually being taught. This is pretty good, actually. Here are five small but significant changes that Emily taught me that will help you break through your Latte Art plateaus like I did during this training. So. Pull a shot and let's get into some milk physics. It's um, milk physics. That's right, specifically cow juice. Oh, and if you don't subscribe to her already, go check out Emily's latte art videos. She's awesome. And thank you to Barista Benji and Sanremo UK for inviting me to your showroom so we could film this. It was a bit bright, so some of the videos came out a little overexposed, but I'm hoping you'll agree that Emily's killer lot advice is worth sticking around until the end. I got another video that day of a latte art throwdown with all three of us, so subscribe if you want to see that when it comes out. Do you want some notes? Uh, yes, please. If you've ever had your hearts come out lopsided, you probably aren't giving them enough time to develop. One of the biggest lessons I got from Emily is to slow down. It's not a race, even though in some latte art competitions you get a point for speed, and if you slow down your pour and give those hearts a little bit more love, you're gonna get a much better shape. One other note I'll say is I don't necessarily think that this was an asymmetrical cut, I think it was an asymmetrical heart. Okay. Two options here, you can take your time on that heart, Right. You could even like develop it by holding it there. Or giving it thing. a wiggle will yeah. also set both sides because the foam will go to both sides. So sometimes if you're running out of foam, people who want to get that last heart will come in and they'll do a little wiggle to get the right, heart to right. stick. Okay, I've, so I have seen that. Okay, that makes sense. If your milk foam is a little inconsistent, this next tip I got from Emily is going to help you a lot. There are two stages of milk steaming, injecting air and integrating. Yeah. But I'm not doing it aggressively, right? Oh, it's a little violent, but it's okay. You get that air in, hopefully you timed it right and you get the right amount of foam and then you get it swirling so it's evenly distributed throughout the whole jug. But what if you screwed up and get too much foam? Well, you can improve over foamed milk by pouring into a second jug like this. Then because we're gonna do that, we're gonna transfer it. If your milk is thicker, you transfer higher. If it's thinner, you don't have to do that as okay. much. Because you're breaking up more foam as you do that. And then when it's in here, you can see it looks oh, a lot right. nicer. Okay. And don't be afraid to pour a little bit out for your fallen latte art brothers and sisters if your foam is a little bit too thick, especially if you have too much milk for your chosen pour anyway. Every time I make latte art, I pour one out for my fallen latte art brothers. It's actually there's a person down there and you're like, this will be necessary for free pours like that damn seahorse I've been trying to get right for like a year where you need to have slightly heavier foam towards the end of your pour to do faces, heads, and blobs. Look at that. Oh, that's so good. It's better than mine. Nice, nice, great. Make an actual dot, please. Um, a little higher. There you go. Nice. Wow, these look great, dude. A bonus tip from Emily is to adjust your wand position to integrate more. While I've generally been moving the wand as little as possible and keeping it just below the surface when I'm integrating, you can go a little bit further down into the middle to pull your milk foam together for a more aggressive roll. Then I'm going to get a really deep so yeah, pull, foam than I did for sure. but then I mix it really well by going closer to the center to get that more violent um, sucking down motion. Have you ever had your pores end up with these little craters on the edge and wobbly outside lines? That's because you need to set your base. If you have a few bubbles, swirl and tap your espresso before you start pouring. Before you pour, you can tap out those bubbles because they're going to get in your way. And they're also going to cause blemish, which is right here. You can kind of see it looks right, like yeah. little freckles. Uh, so maybe you just tap Freckles them. are pretty though. I do think they are. Have you seen my shoulder? I'm covered in them. Now, depending on the coffee that you're using for your espresso, you'll need to set your base differently. It goes without saying that darker roasts are better for latte art as they just give you a thicker crema and a more contrasty canvas to pour onto. But lighter roasts, which I think taste better, tend not to have as much. For lighter or medium roasts, try stacking your cups together closer to the group so it doesn't splash out as much to keep the viscosity. If your crema is a little too thick, make sure you swirl and tap a little bit more and integrate your milk more 
aggressively with a higher initial pour. Integrate, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna land, and I'm gonna flow. The fourth big lesson that will change my life forever, or at least my latte art, is learning how to get clean lines that wrap around properly. If you've ever had your rosetta bases looking like an onion or skewing off to one side, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. First, the sooner you start, the more the milk will fill the cup and wrap around. So make sure you know what you're pouring before you start and don't just figure it out midway through your pour, okay? Just a little, like 20 mils maybe. Alright, now go. Wiggle. <laughs> but notice how much your base filled in. Yeah. So that's a change, right? And oh, very different. Then, and this is a big one, before you start wiggling, let the milk shoot out for just a fraction of a second. Emily said you can kind of throw it out a little bit to get it to shoot away from the pitcher. Then, when you start your wiggle, it'll have a nice line in front of it, so your paw won't have a lean towards whichever side you started your wiggle on. You know, I just integrate a little bit, and I stop, and then right where I integrated, I land, and then I throw it. You also have to push your hearts in at the right time and with the right velocity. There's no point in just sticking in the same position the whole time because then your milk will just end up at the back of the cup. Then if you don't want a base to wrap around the layer like this, then you always go higher for each layer. Okay. Right? But if you want a layer to wrap into the base, you need to be right above it. So let's say you wanted to do a base and then have the second layer be wrapped into the base and these two are separate. You would want this layer to be closer. Okay. Which will also mean if you use less milk during that time because you don't have to go as far. Okay, right? so, so you're allocating space. If I pull these hearts closer to, so the, the base comes out and then pull the heart closer, it's going to go with the rest of it and kind of make it like another line inside. It's a matter of um, proximity and pushing. Okay. So like guiding the pitcher and where the pitcher starts is going to determine whether or not it wraps into the base. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to wrap. Just before you want to start wrapping your tulip hearts or pulling back for your rosetta, start to edge forward and create some separation between the base and the rest of the pour. It's going to look a lot nicer. And number five is all about correcting bad muscle memory. I have a bit of a bias and I tilt my jug a little bit to one side, which can impact my pores quite a bit, especially if I'm using a sharp spout. I also think that because you're using a sharp spout, yeah. I think you're leaning to one side. So it might not yeah. even be the swirling, it might literally just I mean, be that you're leaning to one side. Overcorrect your bias in your head and then you'll come down in the right place. And honestly, latte art is about the art. And while there are milk physics to take into account, specifically cow juice, sometimes the perfect way to do things is a little different for you than it would be for me or for a world latte art competition winner like Emily. Try things out from YouTubers you like, but follow your gut and pour your own way as well. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Emily pours while flipping the bird to everyone Watching, and it's working out pretty good for her. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. Nice. Um, I mean, I, I grew up playing violin, so I feel like I hold it kind of like a bow in a lot of ways. Like, okay. Not exactly, but very similar. Um, where the front is held kind of like, uh, it's gripped in the front, but I'm kind of dangling in the back just to keep oh, it under. Okay. Yeah, I never learned violin, I was a piano guy. Damn it. That's why you're That's doing this the whole time. If you want to see the whole video with all of our banter and more lessons, I put the whole thing up on my Patreon for all tiers. Thank you so much to the few people who've subscribed there. I'm adding more stuff to there these days, so hopefully more people will join the club for bonus videos and entry to Espresso Gear giveaways. I hope this video helps you improve your latte art designs. I think I've gotten pretty good by myself from watching YouTube videos and practicing, and I never even worked in a cafe until recently, and I'm still working on the video about what happened with that. I hope you all appreciate me sharing what I've learned along the way. And definitely make sure you come back for the latte art throwdown. It wasn't as one-sided as you might imagine. The same level oh. of quality. Okay. Johnny. You gotta go. Oh jeez. Thank you so much, Emily, for all your latte art lessons, and thanks to all of you for watching to the end. And I'll see you on the next one.